So, in the series of running C programming, we are discussing dynamic memory allocation in C. In the previous video, we have discussed how to use malloc function to dynamically allocate memory. In this video, we will see how to allocate memory dynamically using calloc function. So, in this video, we will see all the points about calloc function like what is calloc function, the syntax, how to use it. We will see a program also, right. I will show you that program on my laptop practically also I will see and we will also see the difference between malloc function and calloc function, right. All the points, all the detail about calloc function we will discuss in this video. But before that, I just want to tell you one thing, an academy is going to conduct a combat on 13th of March at 11 a.m. It is a scholarship test to ex maximize your gate and ESC preparation. It is a live test and you can take this test for free. Here you will get a chance to compete with thousands of learners from all over India and stand a chance to win up to 100% scholarship. 20 questions you will get and time limit would be 60 minutes and these questions have been curated by their best gate and ESC educators. And after every combat detailed video solution would be given to you by their experts so that you can identify your weak areas and you can improve according to that. You can get it right next time. And for gate aspirants, they also started few batches from 9th of March. In this course, their top educator will be covering all the subjects of CS and IT. And in this course, you will get preparation strategy, tips and tricks, practice questions, numericals along with the detailed explanation of all the concepts. And you can get your doubt cleared in a separate doubt clearing sessions. But this course is paid. You can use my code JKL10 to get 10% discount on your paid subscriptions. And an academy is also offering you a great offer in which if you take 24 months of gate and ESC preparation, then you will get extra 4 months. And if you will take 12 months of gate and ESC plus subscription, you will get extra 3 months free on it just to help you in your gate and ESC preparation. And if you use my code JKL10, you will get extra 10% discount on the reduced prices. So you, the price detail you can see on my screen. And an academy is also conducting an all India scholarship test for all the gate 2023 and 2024 aspirants on 20th of March at 11 a.m. And you can take this test for free. And the syllabus for this test is general aptitude and engineering mathematics. And here also you will get a chance to win up to 100% scholarship. And they have also started an academy light test series for gate and ESC. The first test would be on 13th of March. But subscription of this test series would be paid. The price detail and all, all the other detail of this test series you can see on my screen. So the relevant links and detail I will put in, this, in the description box of this video. If you are interested, you can go and check out. Now let's see what is calloc function. First thing, it is used to allocate memory dynamically. And the full form of this is contiguous allocations. It is a built-in function, right? which is declared in which uh, header file std lib dot h malloc calloc realloc all these functions uh, which are used for dynamically allocate memory and deallocate memory these are declared in this std lib these are built in function the full form of this is contiguous allocation full form for malloc function was memory allocation right and it is used to allocate memory dynamically but it allocates memory in multiple blocks and every block is of same size let me just write down this thing. So, what does this mean? Dynamically allocate multiple blocks of memory and each block is of same size. What calloc, sorry, malloc does, it allocates single block of memory, right? And it allocates, it, it allocates multiple blocks and each block is of, of same size, right? Now, how this is different from malloc, the syntax is it accepts two argument and malloc takes only one argument, right? So, two argument calloc and one argument is this one and second one is size malloc only take this argument the size but it takes two argument n means size t means uh, nothing but it's unsigned int means it will take either uh, value either zero or positive no negative value right so n means number of blocks or number of elements you want to store or number of blocks you want to you know you want that it should allocate in the from which memory from heap right dynamically from which memory uh, section the memory would be allocated from heap section n means number of blocks second one means size of each block so suppose i want to allocate five blocks right five blocks and i want to store five integer so five blocks and and see the return type of this is void pointer same as malloc right why so why void pointer that we have discussed clearly in the previous video when we were discussing malloc function you can watch out that video first right so this is the syntax 
right suppose i am writing here cal of 5 comma size of int right and in last will semicolon right means we need 5 blocks and of integer type so each block size is 4 bytes or maybe in some compiler it's in some machine it's it take 2 byte in take 2 byte and in some it takes 4 bytes right so i'm taking here 4 bytes so it will allocate means from the heap section it will allocate 1 2 3 4 5 5 blocks and each block is of size 4 bytes this is also 4 4 4 4 means you can store here 5 integer right and it it will return what if successfully it has allocated memory it will return base address of this block or you can say the address of the first byte or the first block means base address suppose base address is 1042 so it will return this address the address of the first byte of this these blocks right so it will return the base address but it will return an address in the form of void pointer right so according to our needs which type of value we will store here either it's integer or uh, float or character or anything according to that you are supposed to type cast that pointer suppose here I, I want to store int value so just type cast it into int pointer and the address whatever it will return just store it into a obviously we need a pointer to store the address so suppose I am taking a pointer int star ptr so in ptr I am going to store that address that's it so this is how dynamically you can allocate memory using calloc and this is see this is what in star ptr this is not dynamic memory allocation this is what static memory allocation right i hope you got this because we have discussed this when we were discussing the basics of uh, dma the very first video of dynamic memory allocation right so this is what uh, static memory allocation but this is how we are allocating memory dynamically using calloc right in same if you want to use malloc you will use here malloc and 5 and into size of it right same we will type cast this and we can store this in ptr so it will allocate same it will allocate what one block of 10 bytes and it will allocate five block of each of size 4 byte 4 byte 4 byte sorry 5 into 4 20 bytes 20 bytes right and same you you will you can store five in these are here also right so the only difference is uh, the full form of malloc is memory allocation contiguous allocation second thing is it will allocate multiple blocks of memory each block is of same size it will allocate a single block third difference is what now it will whatever the memory it has allocated the memory would be initialized with zero by default zero all the blocks would be initialized with 0 and in this case it will initialize the these blocks with any garbage value so this is another difference right so this is you can say it's a you know extra thing calloc will do initialization with a 0 extra overhead you can say obviously initialization uh, process also will take some fraction of seconds obviously it will take so it's extra overhead so if you want that the memory should be initialized with a zero then only use calloc function to dynamically allocate memory right because this is this is extra overhead right and it will definitely to some point it will affect the program efficiency right to some point only and this allocation this initialization doesn't matter to you right if you don't want to initialize this with a zero if garbage values are fine with you then you can use malloc only right to dynamically allocate memory so the, this is i guess these are the points about calloc so i hope the difference is also clear to you between calloc and malloc function right now let's just write down a simple program with calloc function over here also i'll take the same example that we have discussed in previous video when we were discussing uh, what about malloc function so rather than writing this example here because that would be same let me just show you directly the practical of uh, how to you know how to use this calloc function right on my laptop see this was our program for malloc function so let me just copy this and create a new file 
Kellogg dot C, right? And let me just paste it. So here we are taking in pointer N and I. Rather than malloc, we'll use calloc to allocate the memory. So the syntax is N, this number of blocks you want, the number of elements you want to store, comma the size of the block, which type of block you want, which type of value you want to store. Here I'm taking int. I want to store integer, right? So we'll take size of int only. Or float you can take, character you can take. It's up to you, right? Now we will ask from the user for entering the value using a for loop, and after that we will print the values, right? I hope now this is clear to you because we have discussed this program very clearly in the last video. So now let me just run this and show you what output you will get and how memory would be allocated, right? And if you will not initialize, you will not enter the values, then it will print zero for all the blocks, right? Now it is asking enter total uh, total values. So three value I want to store. Enter the values four, three, five. So the entered values are four, three, five. Next time, if you want to store five values, you can just enter five values, and according to five values, the memory would be allocated. Or according to ten values, the memory would be allocated. This is the advantage of you can say dynamic memory allocation. Now, let's just do one thing. I don't want to take the value from the user, right? Without initializing, by default, the allocated memory block would be initialized with zero. I have told you using calloc. So let me just show you practical of this thing. See, now it will ask the uh, number of blocks you want to enter. So here, see, I have just commented out these points, the one for loop in which you were entering the value, right? And we have only one for loop. For printing the entered values, right? This we have only. See, it is asking enter total number of values. So three, enter. So we haven't initialized anything. So the entered values are zero, zero, zero. If the same thing you will do with malloc, then these value it will print any garbage value. See, I'll show you. Rather than here cal calloc, I'm using malloc. So n into size of int right and we are not going to initialize we will just print this is the only difference right now let's just run this again and show you what value you will get either garbage value or any other thing see enter number values 3 and see you are getting any garbage 3 values right so i hope now the difference between calloc and malloc is clear to you and uh, you can use calloc function to you know allocate some memory or allocate memory dynamically in your program, right? Now one more assignment for you is, first of all, you need to store five values, right? Integer value, right? Using calloc function. Then you are supposed to free that memory. Again, you are supposed to enter five float values or you can say 10 float values. So again, you will use now, at this time, you will use malloc function, right? And again, at last, you will free the memory, right? Two time, first time, five number, integer number using calloc, then free the memory, you have to free the memory, then 10 float values using malloc, and then you are supposed to free the memory, right? This is the program you have to write. This is the assignment for you, right? So I hope now that's it for this video. So I hope now calloc function is clear to you. Now the assignment for you is you're supposed to write down the difference between calloc and malloc function, right? So in the next video, we'll see about realloc function. So now it's in the next video, till then, bye-bye, take care.